Hello people, Joe from Hello Sailor FX here with another installment of our Trainwreck amplifier build. This is a modeless amplification kit, Trainwreck Rocket uh, style amplifier. As you can see, we've made a little bit more progress along the way. In this episode, we're going to look at the wiring uh, to the board now that, now that the board's fitted. If you've watched earlier videos, the Amtex among you will have been screaming at the screen saying, fit the board before you install all the components. Come on, Joe, you're gonna cause yourself a hassle. Well, let me tell you, fitting this board down and getting these, these small bolts attached, nut, nuts and washers on attached, while all the components was on the board, was an absolute, I think I'd be rather add new pickups to a 335, put it that way. That's how bad it was. Anyway, so in this episode, we're gonna look at um, wiring up everything that's left to go to the board, the choke and such. Um, if this is something you're interested in, please like and subscribe. If you haven't seen all the other videos that have took us thus far, please go back and watch them. Um, now, it's knocking on a little bit and I have to be finished in here by quarter past 11 to have this building keys back for the muster at 12 o'clock this evening. So I can only work until, 12, until around that time. So we'll see how far we get. Let's go. But first things first, I'm gonna wire up the the two center taps. This one's for the six six point three volt heaters, and this one is for the HT. They're gonna go through to these these earth connections back here, which is the final filter cap. All the earths are joined in together anyway. Hello people, we're now back at home after a long duty um, and we're going to continue work on this train wreck amplifier. As you can see, I've made a bit more progress. I've fitted the board, the boards in and what have you. I've fitted uh, these 100 ohm resistors to these pots up here. And I'm also fitting a 1.5k resistors. Uh, Pots, what am I saying, to the uh, valve sockets up here. And now I'm also fitting a 1.5K resistors to pins one and two, as per the schematic. Um, this has just brought up a quick, um, a quick info or tip. When you're bending resistors or wires or components, it really helps to have uh, a good set of, of flat nose pliers. Now I've got two sets, one larger than the other. And the reason why I say it's good to have a set of these, when you're bending resistors, for example, these ones at 90 degrees, I use this, this um, edge to measure each one because I want all of these resistors to be approximately the same, um, the same pitch or the same uh, shape. I'll just put this over and now I know it's the same distance between the bend there and the bend there as all my other resistors. I hope that makes sense. Um, and, and of course I've got two sets. So if I want to do a larger bend or a larger flat edge, I'll, I'll use these ones. Um, not essential, but it, it's nice to get it as neat as you can. I mean, come, come on, let's face it, I'm not Marcus Reeves from uh, Reeves Electro. It's, I'm never going to have that sort of shape into my things, but this goes a little way towards it. Even um, like the distance away from, from the actual valve base itself, I'll just use this. To, uh, to make sure that both legs are the same distance. Right, I'm gonna crack on and fit the rest of these 1.5K resistors. The, the wires or the cables coming from this are gonna come, these two valves here are gonna come right the way under the board and go to uh, these 220K resistors here. So one's gonna go there and one's gonna go there. And then th this here, from this terminal here, we're gonna go to our our um, cup pot and from the other side of this sozo cap here we're going to go to the other lug of the cup pot and i'm going to crack on and wire them in then okay so we've now got our um one and a half k resistors all in and the cabling coming from them coming to the 220k ohm resistors over here and then from these two terminals here going up to our pot our cup pot next i'm going to wire in the um the preamp valves and the phase inverter valve to the board let's go 
Whilst wiring up my um, my um, second preamp valve socket, I'm going up to the volume pot up here. I realised that I had lost my my nice capacitor. I'm not sure where that um, where that ended up. In the process of moving from duty to home, I seem to have misplaced it. It's a shame. However, so to to, to move on from there, I've got because I want 100 pf. I've got a 510, uh, sorry, a 51 PF and a 47 PF um, capacitors, both new old stock. I've wired them in parallel, and I'm just going to check to see if I've got any, uh, see if I've got the right value or any leakage or anything like that. So 107 PF, it's close enough for government work for me, and normally we would have some ESR, which is resistance uh, and, and leakage over in this side here, but we have none. On my little tester, I don't know if you can see that. These are real cheap from Amazon. A lot of people don't like them, but I think it does a good job of approximating how things are going to sound. But I'm going to use these two wired in as my um, as my brake cap. Anyway, that's all of our preamp sockets now. Uh, sorry, the two preamp sockets and the phase inverter socket now wired. I'm going to turn my attention to this top row here, which is all of our controls. I've already got my 100 pf cap in and a screen for the for the cable coming over to the second um, the second gain stage. So I'm going to go ahead and wire all that up now. Okay, so now we have all of our um, controls wired up the top here. I think that is me pretty much done and ready to turn the amp on. I'm gonna have a hoover out. Well, we still, that reminds me, we still need to drill holes for this, uh, to secure this resistor down. I mean, it's it's not going anywhere. But um, yeah, we still need to do that, but I'm gonna test the amp first. So first thing first, I'm gonna hoover it all out. Then I'm gonna turn it on. We'll see if we've got the voltages where we're meant to have them. We'll add in a, a rectifier valve slash tube. Ensure that we've got B plus going to all the bits that we've got. You see this B plus node here. I don't know if you can see that properly. It's got one, two, three, three cables going to it, a resistor and two caps. It would only have been one cap, and that would have been fine. I would have had space um, if I hadn't have added in this extra 10 UF cap to bring it up to 40 UF in this filter node. So it's a little bit messy here, but um that's a lesson learned for next time. And this amplifier is for myself, so it doesn't really matter. Um well not to me it doesn't anyway so next stage hoover this thing out and then um and then we'll add some power now I'll run into a few snags um when I was testing this amplifier mainly because I didn't pay attention when I was soldering underneath the board however I have now caught up with it and found out what was wrong and I'm going to just show you the quick technique of how I um, fault found in this uh, amplifier before anyone picks me up this is a plastic implement that I'm going to be poking around in here there is still voltage inside so what I found was that I've missed a link here which is why we were getting no B plus uh, coming out here so th these guys over here weren't earthed and there's also a, another link over here which is uh, a bias for the second half of this preamp valve wasn't biased, so it was getting like a really gated sound and not much much sound coming out. And it was due to this. How I found it is I plug in my little battery amp. I've got a Black Star Fly. Um, and, and what I've got on the end of it is a normal guitar cable that is that's got a pointer at the end from a multimeter, a capacitor, and a clip. So basically, what I've got is the tip of the uh, of of the um, jack goes from my amplifier through the tip down this cable through a 630 volt 100 nf capacitor and then that's soldered to the end of this um probe and then the, the outside the the sleeve is soldered directly to this clip here and what we do is we clip this clip to earth on the amplifier i do this for guitar pedals too and now everything that this audio probe now touches it's going to amplify the sound in that area. So if I now turn the amplifier on, I'll select the lower, in fact, I'll go with the higher voltage windings. 
and then turn the B, B plus on. There we go. Now our amplifier should be coming to life. However, um, I'm going to now turn on my battery amp. You'll hear a little bit of hum. That's that's okay. Now anywhere where I touch with this probe, we're going to get the sound out. So if I strum the guitar and then touch here. That's the sound at that point. And now if I come over to this first 12x7. So after it, this is what we're getting. So I, so I know that we're at least getting signal through to here to amplify it. And then we come over to this 12x7 now. Same signal because that's the input. A bit more gain. And then that, that's the output of it. And what we found them was at that point I wasn't getting the, uh, the sound coming out. And all you do is just get your circuit, follow it through. Yeah, I'll turn it off to get rid of the noise. And why not turn all of this jazz off? Right. Um, follow your circuit through piece by piece following the signal path. And just audio probe every little bit. And as soon as the sound doesn't do what you expect it to do, you've found your problem. And you focus on that area. And I went back through and watched the earlier videos um, of me building a board. And I absolutely rushed the underboard wiring. And uh, I missed them two bits off. So uh, that's one to watch for.